Check, microphone check. Okay. All right, so let's talk about ANOVA and we'll do some 2 keys HSD, okay? So now, simpler question. So the year is 1957 and it is becoming increasingly apparent that tar is a major, major carcinogen, okay? You work for a major cigarette company that wants to know discreetly if different kinds of cigarettes have different high levels of tar and hence are more carcinogenic, okay? So you collect a random sample of three different kinds of cigarettes called kings, filters, and menthols, and we we're going to test this with the significance of 0.01, all right? Okay, so the first question that I have is, is this in fact, what, what kind of test are we going to run? Okay, all right? And so how we're going to think about that, okay, is what is first our explanatory variable? Different kinds of cigarettes, yeah. So our explanatory is going to be the different kinds of cigarettes. What kind of variable is that? That's categorical. Good. C. Excellent. Okay. That's a C. Now, what's our response variable? Levels of tar. Okay. And let's actually, so I'll give you an, uh, how we're going to measure this. It's a kind of a good question. We measure it in terms of micrograms. All right. So it's measured in terms of micrograms. So it's going to actually be micrograms of tar, right? So micrograms of tar, okay? And so what kind of variable is that? Q. It's quantitative, right? Because it can be measured, yeah? Okay. So this is what kind of comparison? C to Q. Excellent. C to Q. Great. Okay. So we've got C to Q. And so <coughs> next question is, how many samples are here? I got three samples, okay? So can I run a two sample means test? No, I cannot. I got three samples, all right? So I can't run a two sample means, what do I need to run? An ANOVA, hence the name, more ANOVA practice. There you go. Right, so anytime that I have more than two samples, if I have three or more samples, and I can actually run with as many samples as I want, I'm going to have to run with ANOVA, okay? I got to use ANOVA, all right? I can't use the two sample t-test, all right? Okay, cool. Good? So far, so good. All right. So I've got an ANOVA, and so now the next question that I have is, um, what's going to be my null hypothesis? What's my null? Excellent, okay. There is no difference in levels of tar for any of the three cigarettes, yes? So there is no difference there. Now, the way that we write that symbolically is we're going to say it's the average levels of tar for each group are the same. Notice mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. No difference in the average levels of tar. Okay? And saying the average levels of tar is just fine too. Right? It's the same idea. And what's our alternative? There is a difference, yes. Okay, or actually more, even more, at least one, this is the more correct, at least one um, of the levels of tar is different from the group, okay? Is different from the group. Okay? At least one of the levels of tar is different from the group. All right, cool. So we kind of set it up. Notice, and what we, we don't actually have a symbolic one for this one. We just write it out that way because we don't know which one's different, right? That's basically the idea. We don't know which one's different, so consequently we don't have a difference there yet. So now I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna do a stack crunch, and I'm gonna open up, it's called cigarette. 
Cigarette brand. Not cigarette correlation, just called cigarette. Okay. And here we go. Here's my data set. And you'll see my data set. The king is KG. The menthols are MN. And the filters are FL. Okay. And what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna actually going to generate a box plot. Because the box plot is, is what we generate for C to Q. That's our graph of choice for our comparisons. Okay. So I'm going to go into graph. I'm going to choose box plot. Okay. And I'm going to choose my tar levels. I went into graph, I went into box plot, graph, box plot, right? I chose my tar levels. I'm gonna put in my median marker, is the red. You're gonna see that anyways, but we'll just make it red. My x-axis label, right, is gonna be my explanatory variable. X-axis is always explanatory, okay? X-axis, the explanatory, which is what? Cigarettes, yeah. Or kinds of cigarettes. My y-axis is micrograms of tar. Okay. And we just say box plot of micrograms of tar by cigarette. that compute. There it is. So far so good? Okay. Tell me where, where are you lost? I just, because I had your ID and I had both eyes chart. Oh, got it. I went too quick before. Okay. So now you're going to go to graph, box plot, okay, and then you're going to select uh, with data. Oh, no, no, graph, box plot, it should say with data. with data. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a with summary. Maybe I missed that part. And then you'll select your columns, which are all the tar columns. Okay, and then I marked them using x-axis label. By the way, x-axis is always the explanatory variable. Y-axis is always the response variable in stats. Okay. Good. compute. And uh, I clicked on the mean marker, so it made it red, a median. So that's where the medians are. That's where the 50% the 50th percentile is for each one of them. I'm going to copy and paste this. Copy image. How are you guys doing? Did you find it this time? Yes, no? Now you just, if you click, click on options and you click copy, right? What will happen is you'll get another picture of it Right, if you're trying to copy paste, is that what you're trying to do? Oh, no, when you try to select multiples, you have to do shift. Oh, yeah. yes, or control. Control. control, control, control. Yes, that's true. Sorry about that. Didn't even think to myself to instruct that one. <laughs> all right, so we have three of them there, right? We have all three of the TARs. Now, if I look at this, what's your first instinct? Do we actually have a difference? Is there a difference in the amount of tar based upon this box plot? Does it look like one? Yeah, there does, doesn't there? What, Janus, does, does it look like a difference there? Yes, why? So explain, like in, in, in words, yes. Because <laughs> right, this is what you might have to write into an exam. Like, is there a difference? What's the difference? Uh, well, the first one, I wasn't able to label the box plot. But it did come out as King Tar, right? Yes, so King Tar. Okay. At 20 micrograms of tar. As its median. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. Okay. Versus the other two, uh, the inventory of the one minute medium of one hundred thirteen to one hundred twenty-three. Okay. Got it. Okay. So there, there we go. So the king has more. It looks like it has more, right? It looks like it has more top tar. You guys know what a king cigarette is? No. We we formal smokers. Smokers, formal smokers. It's a big cigarette. Big cigarette. <laughs> and then like this one has a filter. Like this is a long. This is nineteen fifty seven. Come on now. And then we have a menthol, right? And uh, so a king tar. It's like a big female cigarette. Right? So it makes sense that it would have a higher level of tar. But what we need to know is, statistically speaking, so this is a box plot, and uh, something I talked about in some of the video, but I'll, I'll re-emphasize uh, re here, is, is that the, um, the box represents the middle 50%, okay? That's the middle 50%, right? And so it kind of represents the amount of variation inside of, um, inside of that particular sample, yes? The median is the 50th percentile, yes? So like basically the, 25th to 50th percentile is just sitting right here at that median level. Then this is the 50th to 75th, right? And this, these are the ones, the big and the small ones, okay? So what these boxes represent are the normal ranges of tar for those kinds of cigarettes, okay? So this is, right, for a king cigarette, these, the box is a normal range of tar for the cigarette. Right, so it's the normal range of tar for the cigarette, okay? And so like, what we see here is, is that the normal amount for king tar is significantly more than the normal amount for the, the menthol tar and the filtered tar, right? We don't wanna base it up upon one value uh, for the cigarette, but like a normal range, like the middle 50%, that's a good thing to base our differences on. So it's really based upon the boxes, okay? So again, normal for menthol, and this one here is normal for filter. If the boxes don't overlap, okay, and this is the thing about ANOVA, right, and it actually has to do with the t-test too, but in general for ANOVA, if the boxes do not overlap, if the boxes do not overlap, or one of the boxes does not overlap with the other two, then it suggests we have a difference. So this is like one of the suggestions, the suggestion for what's happening, right? It's saying, you know what? Looking at this graph, it appears, just like what James was saying, it appears that we actually have a difference. This one appears to be statistically have more tar than these other two. Okay, because what we have is we have no overlap in boxes. All right, so that's the first way to think about these box plots as a way of thinking about our whether or not we have statistical differences. Okay, so now I've got that. I look at my box plot. Right, it kind of tells me a little bit of something. Now what I'm going to do? Okay, I'm going to exit out of this, and now I'm going to run my ANOVA. So I'm going to stat. Okay, ANOVA. This is called a one-way ANOVA because all we're doing is we're comparing one difference with me so far. Okay, one way. And then again, we're going to select our columns. So control, select our columns. Okay. And I'm actually also going to compute my Tukey's HSD. Tukey's HSD, we'll talk about that one in just a second. Tukey's goes along with ANOVA. So ANOVA tells us if there is a difference, Tukey's HSD tells us what that difference is, okay? Um, I'm also going to test for the homogeneity of variance. That just basically, what that means, if you look at the requirements, okay, um, in terms of for ANOVA, the requirements will say that the variances have to be the, basically the same. Homogeneity means the variances are the same, okay? Okay, and I'm going to compute. There it is. Let 
the gear with me so far. Okay. I just picked TARS. There's the three TARS. Okay. So we look at the three TARS. We got 25 in each one. Okay. Um, just to, as a side note, just in case you ever see this, it's not going to be on your exam. Okay. But this is just something if you ever see it. This test for homogeneity and variance, because I failed to reject the null, that means that there's no difference in the variances. It's a weird one like that it does that, but that basically says there's no difference. The variances are basically the same. That's what it's saying. Okay? Um, and you can actually look at that. The standard deviations look they're almost identical. Right? They're sitting right there, so like there's no difference in the variances. Let's go to the ANOVA table. All right. Now the ANOVA table, one, it gives us what our stat is, by the way. If I give you this table, it's not going to say F stat. It'll just say stat, right? Because you've got to know that it's an F, right? But then it also has a p value. What does that p value? Right? Less than 0. 0.0001. There it is. What does that tell me? What does it tell me, Julia? It tells me reject the null, right? P is less than alpha. Okay, remember 0 0.01 was our alpha. So P is less than alpha, so I reject the null. What does that mean? What's the result of that? Ah, sorry. What's the result of that? What does that mean, uh, Vanessa? No, we are there. But it's the opposite. You rejected that. Okay, Do you, you're gonna. I don't know if you're gonna kick yourself or I'm gonna kick me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna go. Oh. Everything will be right on it. It'll be like totally correct. You got the right p value and you got the right. You know everything. You like she's phrase test statistic and everything. She writes p is less than alpha. And I'm gonna reject the null and she goes. There's no difference. And we're like, no, that's so wrong. You rejected that. The null and. It, here, here's the thing. Here's what I want you to think about. Sit down and just take your time, right? You know what it means to reject something. What does it mean to reject something? It means to get rid of it, right? Okay. And you've written down what the null hypothesis is. You're going to get rid of the null hypothesis. So don't be like reactionary. Don't try and get it done fast. It's your final exam. Who wants to sit there and get it done fast? I, I get it. You're probably going to want to get it over with, but not fast, right? So, we got p is less than alpha, we're going to reject the null, so what does that mean? There are at least one, right, here's our conclusion, at least one of the means is different. Which one do you think is different? Yeah, it's probably different, okay, the king one is different, at least the one of the mean um, tar levels is different. Excuse me. So at least one of the mean tar levels is different. All right. Um, for the cigarettes, we don't know which one is it, it is yet. But that's our conclusion. It's like, huh, I found a difference. Okay. Now, the question is, which one's the different one? All right. Which one's the different one? And that's where Tukey's HSD comes in. So which one is different? Okay, so which one is different? That's where you use Tukey's HSD to do this. Okay. So I go in here, and Tukey's HSD, it starts out with the largest one, the largest mean. Okay, so King Tar is the largest mean. So we get the biggest mean, okay? 
And what it's going to do is it's com going to compare one by one, like a two sample t test. Not exactly, but it's going to be kind of like this. And it's going to say, okay, so how different is it? So the difference in tar level for the menthol tar, okay, this is basically, um, this is going to be king tar, or menthol tar, excuse me, menthol tar minus king tar, okay? Right? So when I go in, that difference, that's going to be negative 8.2. So what does that mean? That means that the menthol, on average, has a tar level of 8.2 micrograms less than the king tar. Okay? Is that statistically significant? Yes. Right? This is statistically significant. And basically, this thing right here, which I talked about in the video, that's a confidence interval. Okay? It's a confidence interval for the amount of tar or the difference in tar, basically. It's a confidence interval for the difference in tar. So what we're saying there here is if you kind of, and this is kind of the idea, if I pick a king cigarette out at random, okay, and I compare it to a menthol cigarette, there are amounts of tar, right? Most likely somewhere in here, okay, I'm gonna end up with the amount, the difference in the amount of tar, right? Okay. So on average, it'll have a difference of 8.2 micrograms, okay? But it'll generally be somewhere in between here and here, right? Between negative 10 and negative 5. What it's definitely not is it's definitely not no difference. You guys see that? It's definitely not no difference because no difference would be zero in there, right? Zero is not in there, so it's not that, okay? So what we're saying is king tar is more than menthol tar, okay? King tar is number one in terms of the level of tar. Menthol tar, number two, okay, or possibly number two. Menthol tar is number two. And what that's saying is, is that it's statistically significantly less. What about filtered tar? Is there a statistical difference? Yeah, there is, okay? Now, next question. Is there a difference in tar between filtered cigarettes and menthol cigarettes? Right? So this is filter tar, by the way, minus king tar. Sorry. Okay. It is statistically significantly different. Is there a difference between the filtered tar and the king tar? That's this one right here, by the way, I should show you. No. First things first, the difference is 0.28 micrograms between filtered and menthol. I said filtered and menthol, didn't I? Filtered and menthol, okay. So, filtered and menthol. So there is one between these two, so I'm pointing this one. These two, yes, definitely. Definitely, so good, good job. Well done. Yeah, because they're, but what about filtered and menthol? No, why not? How do I know? Not why not, but how do I know? Yeah, look at the p-value. P-value is almost one. It's very large, yes. It's almost one, so it's almost certain that we get this kind of difference, all right? And basically, you can also see in the confidence interval, zero is right in the middle of that thing, okay? So that p-value says there's no difference between menthol and filter. So there's no difference between menthol and filter. Okay? What do you think? That's it. Right? That's our decision making. What what we want to do is what does two piece HSD tell me? Right? Well what two piece HSD tells me is it tells me whether or not I actually have a significant difference between the cigarettes tar pairwise, right? Difference between the variable pairwise. And so I start out with the highest one, king tar, and I compare it group by group. King tar to menthol, right? Yeah, statistically significant difference. King tar to filtered tar, yes, statistically significant difference, right? Okay, now 
Then I'm done with comparing against King Tar because I compared it against all the groups. The only one I have left is menthol against filter. Okay, menthol against filter. So what does that tell me? No, no significant difference between those two. All right. So the one that I have difference with King Tar. Right. Do King Tar cigarettes have more tar than the other two? Yes. Statistically significantly more tar. It's sitting right there. Right. Okay. That is definitely the one that actually has the most tar. You guys see that? That's how that works. All right, good. So the ANOVA, just to kind of recall, the ANOVA tells us whether or not there actually is a difference, right? Two keys HSD tells me what that difference is, which ones actually are different, <coughs> all right? All right, so that's the ANOVA. Any questions on the ANOVA? C to Q comparison, three or more samples. Yes? Okay. Awesome. All right. So give me a moment here.